Some of the most striking Islamic gardens are the ones that can somehow captivate you. Even in their smallest courtyards. In Alhambra, you, you walk through spaces, you go into a very small courtyard and you can be almost out of breath. It feels incredible. You feel present and you're completely there. And so it has to be captivating. The garden has to be special, has to be right. What we wanted to do is invest in this building the qualities that are inherent in great Islamic architecture, you know, the fundamental stuff about quality of light, light entering a building, and of course with light comes shadow. And then we have views out and into gardens, and I think nature, water, and that enclosures, and uh, which we've endeavoured to achieve here, sort of invested, sort of refer back to you know the great traditions in uh, I said you know uh, very humbly for us it's always trying to take the essence of those gardens geometric layout the simplicity in the layout the water is always source of life and the central feature the four quadrants etc geometries textures and more important than all that is the way that they just link with the architecture that's very very important and I mean, if you notice the motif we have on the stone pattern and the paving on the floor, these, and these all came from, from Spanish gardens, from looking at Andalusian gardens. And the motif is happening in the building, so it repeats again in the garden, and all our modulation, the entire grid of the garden follows the building grid to the millimeter, so it, it's all one. It's all coming together as one, and I don't think in Islamic gardens, the most special ones, this is the strongest component. The way you cannot tell where is outside, where is inside, where is architecture. It's, it's a very subtle references. Of course, it's contemporary, the building is modern. It, it's a, it's a readaptation. And Islamic gardens have always done that amazingly. In every culture, in every continent, they've readapted to, to, what, to the time and to what they're good at doing and the craft and all that. So this is one more layer, you know, one more transformation if you want. This entire garden you see on the first floor is responding to the brief that you have many, many students that will need to use it and sit around it. And the, the whole geometry of the garden, apart from following the principles of, uh, you know, traditional Islamic gardens, but that design in particular allows seating throughout and, and you have the, the paving around it and that central block that is carved into two areas, two major sitting areas that if there are events you can put tables and you can furnish. So they can transform for the students to use them in many different ways. So that was, if you want, a major parameter that the garden was created, it's de you know, devoted to that. You know, this garden is enclosed on three sides from the building and opens up on one side. So they're, they're just really nice retreats where you can have shade, you can have sound of water. Water is a main element. They have, they're well, they're, you know, well designed, symmetrical, clean, simple. Of course, they're complex. I mean, there are many, many, many layers behind. But when you look at it, it, it looks very basic. Everything makes sense. Everything is clear, not complicated. And... Uh, and, and, and it feels right, and, and, and gives you that, that intimate feeling. The trees, we had to almost do a miracle to, to put big trees like that, because the trees needed to be of a certain shape and character in the middle of, surrounded by the, by the big building around it. Proportionally, they needed to be quite significant. However, we had 50 centimeters of depth, which is, so we had to select a species that can survive in little depth. We tried to give it as much soil volume as possible, so we've, the planters where they're planted are quite large, and we've taken the soil as much as we can, well-drained soil scientists. We've worked with someone to get the right mix of soil for that tree. And luckily, this cherry tree uh, gives us beautiful bloom, nice fall color, beautiful silhouette in winter. So you have the whole seasonal, you know, the variety we need in seasons to change. We did a lot, a lot of research on what was traditionally used 
in Andalusian garden and in Moroccan gardens and how can we you know transport them here how can we make them work here etc in the first level we have that herring almost so Stanton Williams used that old almost old looking brick very almost aged which is a very very nice quality to have in a new building almost time passing so our flooring was the same not the same brick but but a stone that that is aged and the pattern is is also taken back from typical Andalusian gardens. And then, but that central part, the, the, the beige stone, was a limestone. And then in the middle, we have the black marble because we wanted just a reflection, a reflective surface. So the water mirror is black so that it reflects the building and the garden and amplifies the experience. If you go up, we it's all is the whole garden is based on a zelij, which is the typical small tiles that Moroccan use everywhere. And in small courtyards, they always use them, walls, floors, everywhere. So we did the same thing. We created this carpet that wraps from the wall to the floor, back up on the bench, and the whole garden is, in, you know, enveloped in that. Uh, however, the Zellij will not perform in London and will not be durable. So we chose three different stones to get the colors that, that, that work well in London. And, and, and we've, so it's stone instead of the, the, the terracotta. And uh, the garden has this central water you know, feature with, with a channel, but in the old days, these channels used to be agricultural channels to carry water, to irrigate. Now we're using, in London, it rains all the time. So the channel is a carved bronze channel that takes all the rainwater in it and drains it. And the water basin is just a small touch of water in the garden. So you have water, the sitting area, the stone. And again, the garden is multiple. It has a long bench and a lot of loose furniture. So the students can use it any way they want. During the trip that His Highness asked me to go around and visit all these magnificent places, some projects were just breathtaking. And you're looking at projects that are 800 years old, 500 years old, and they're still so timeless and so present when you're there. So those qualities for me are very important in any garden or any pro if you can provoke that, if you can achieve that. So it was a big learning, learning, it eye opener and, and a, and it makes you always ask the question, what is what you're doing, you know, durable and sustainable? Is it valid? Is it, does it address the context, the needs, the programs, the, the, everything? I mean, holistically. And so what I've learned from these trips definitely stays with me on any type of garden we're, we're designing. I think in, in all environments, all urban environments, in, in every building, if, I mean, bringing nature in and, and, and giving a small place for, for people to reconnect a little bit with nature and, and bringing some garden component is very important because people are in desperate need, especially in cities, and we're, you know, we're building more and more and losing more and more green space, so it, it, it becomes very, very important to do it properly and, 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 and hope that people value it and appreciate it and they can somehow eventually help in you know, protecting and conserving other places that, that we are chopping very quickly. Mm -hmm.